I'd like to talk about your theological understanding that relates to your psychedelic use and ha how you would um, compare what you've garnered from your psychedelic use versus dissociative use and how they might be similar in certain ways but different in other ways. Yeah, we can do that, brother. Um, I started out the I started out doing dissociatives. That was the first thing I, I did, and I didn't really. I just was doing them for fun, and I guess to get messed up. But I had some weird experiences that I didn't catch at the time. Like it's one of those things that where you're in the moment of them, you don't catch it, and but later on you look back and you're like, oh, that was crazy. That should have opened my eyes right there. But. I'll give you one example, man. Um, what, what, what do you consider salvia del worm? You, do you consider that a psychedelic or dissociative? I've heard a lot of people specifically refer to it as a dissociative, but I think it's more of a like a like a delirient type of dissociative. Not exactly a delirient, but they say there's no euphoria attached to it. And it, it was, yeah, it was horrible, dude. Yeah, it, it's not as much of a, an awareness that you get with regular dissociative usage, so to speak. Well, the, this one time I'm talking about with, with Salvia, I, I smoked it in a car with my girlfriend and one of my friends at the time. Now, all of a sudden my girlfriend disappears out of the car. She's no longer there. And then my friend is like, I got to go inside. But And he got out, but he wasn't moving normal like time was skipping. And what I mean by that was one minute he was right beside of me in the car. He was in the passenger seat right beside of me. Then he was outside the car. Then he was like up to my to a porch light, or not a porch light, like a street light. And then he was halfway up to my house. Then he was at my porch. Then he was gone. And that, I didn't recognize it at the time. I just thought, oh, you took a, you know, you're hallucinating. But after I had done experimented with other psychedelics, I don't believe that's an, I don't believe that's a hallucination at all. I believe that you're tapping into actual what reality. And I'll give you an example of the one side I had. A, I've had a few pretty profound psychedelic experiences. One of them, the first one that was profound to me was I took mushrooms and basically like a, a voice popped in my head that was like, you need to be nicer to people. You need to be nicer to yourself. Like you take advantage of people. You need to stop doing that. And like, like ran a list down of things I was fucking up at, dude. But it did it in a very nice way. And then a few months later, I took LSD and went to a void. And ever since I went to that void, man, like my whole life changed. When I came out of that void, I saw the world create itself. Like the whole entire world was creating itself. Like it was new and fresh. It looked like cars were on roller coaster tracks. It looked like that people were being led around by puppet strings. You couldn't see the puppet strings, but they just, the way they were moving made it look that way. And nothing made sense, man. Like nothing made sense anymore. And I was like, well, wait, who am I? Where are we at? What are we doing? Because this, this does not feel right. And dude, ever since then, um, my life has changed, I guess you could say. See, I, I think that psychedelics are more of a, like, I, how do I put this? Like, it's more of an emotional experience than what you have with dissociatives, where everything is yeah. more, um, like, with dissociatives, don't get me wrong, like, it's very, it's a very powerful experience, but it feels more alien, so to speak. Yeah, it kind of does. I, I noticed, you know, I got, a, I got a cold about like two or three months ago, man, and I and they gave me DXM, like the actual prescription promethazine kind, and I took it, man, and it the first time I took it, because it had been a very long time since I took it, I took about twice the recommended dosage, and then I waited a little bit and took one more uh, syringe full, dude, and it felt like I was on LSD. Like, it literally felt like I was on LSD. But then I took it again another time, and it took me right back to, like, the, from what I remember is, like, a teenager in, like, mid, like, lower 20s. Like, a dark, kind of a dark place. 
I got a lot of benefit from it. It took me to this very, very dark place and showed me some things. Like, so I'm grateful for that. But, and I just feel like DXM in particular and dissociatives kind of take you down a dark path. And, and like you said, the psychedelics are more of like a uplifting, emotional, like loving type of, um, yeah, I guess. But with trip that being said, dissociatives aren't dysphoric by any means. Like they, well, except for salvia, I guess. Like there's there's this sense of euphoria attached to dissociatives, but it's a weird kind of euphoria. Like psychedelics are a lot more euphoric than dissociatives, but in a, in a different way. Dissociatives they have this um, this sort of darkness to them. But it, it's not as. But it was. I can point it up. It's not as. As same way as psychedelic is like it's more of a. Um, it's more. It's more of a calming type of, dark, that makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel you. It does because it's almost like it takes you to some really dark places, but it kind of holds your hand while it's doing it. You know what I mean? I've noticed. With um, DXM, it puts you in a better headspace for stuff that does induce dysphoria, like Benadryl. Mixing DXM with Benadryl always takes away from the fear aspect for some reason. And mixing the two together, it's like they're not even the same drug as they would be if they were just taken by themselves. I wonder what would happen if you took DXM and added LSD on top of it. I, fuck, I, man, I'm about to do that. I think, I, the brother, I'm not doing a psychedelic in a year, in about a year and a half, and I've only, I only did that that DXM or that promethazine recently because I was sick. But I have not, like I've mixed psychedelics before, but I've never mixed the dissociative with the psychedelic. I wonder what would happen. I don't even know if I want to find out. <laughs> I think. I think um, with it taken away from the fear aspect, that has something to do with the. Um, I, I think it has to do with the minor opiate like properties of the AXM plus its, um, its effect on serotonin. It has a more powerful effect on serotonin release than other dissociatives in comparison, the AXM specifically. That's what makes DXM more like uh, an intactogen like MDMA in comparison yeah. to other dissociatives. Like let me ask you let me ask you this question real quick, Manny, because you were like when it comes to dissociatives and DXM, like you're on a level of your own. Like I can't even come close to it. So I wanna know I wanna know your opinion on this. Um when I quit doing DXM when I was a teenager, like I said, I did it from probably about the time I was 15 till 20, maybe 20, 21, like pretty frequently. And when I stopped, man, like I stopped a few times in between. And every time I stopped, I got like what I would consider now almost clinically depressed. Do you think it's just because it drains, it completely drains your serotonin after a certain point? Or what's your input Absolutely. on that? Yeah. Serotonin, 100%. Because it has such a powerful effect on serotonin release that it works more effective than any other um, clinically prescribed antidepressants that you would get, like SSRIs, that would take two to three weeks to even start working. But DXM works instantly. Yeah. I believe it, dude. Because every time I would get, every time I would get depressed, and I would take it, I would feel better. Or sometimes I do. I, I kind of think that's why I got addicted to pain pills when I was a teenager. Because that, and I'm not talking shit about DXM or anything. Because I do. I genuinely believe if it's used responsibly and moderately, it can it can help change your whole entire life for the better. My problem was I did not use it moderately and I did not use it responsibly. So I take 100% ownership for that. But I kind of wish I wouldn't have abused it because it kind of seems like ever since that happened when I was a teenager, I, I went from that to either have feeling like I had to take that or take a pain pill to like not feel like depressed, depressed. 
And I kind of was playing that game up until recently with the putting shit in your body to try to cope with it. And it's, I can link it all back to DXM, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to say that. And then people listen to this and be like, Oh, I, I don't want to do it associate or stay away from it. I'm just saying this, you know, for people hear it, they can be like, Oh, I need to use it responsibly. Because I'm telling you, I swear, man, I think it fucked my life up for a while. Not just that. I'll take responsibility for that. But that and other drugs, you know? See, like, another thing to consider is that psychedelics, generally speaking, are a lot safer than dissociatives, generally speaking. Like, if you, if you look at um, the LD50 for LSD, you'd have to take so much LSD, like, it's human humanly impossible to overdose on substances like LSD or, or magic mushrooms. You can't overdose on magic mushrooms either. You can't overdose on um, on a number of different psychedelics. Of course, you can't overdose on THC. Everyone knows that. And then there's um, I'm trying to think. What, what are some other psychedelics? Like uh, Maybe peyote. Yeah, DMT, mescaline. You, so few reports of anyone having overdoses directly linked to mescaline that it's just. But the thing is, like, um, with um, DXM compared to other dissociatives, I think it's harder to overdose on it. It's pretty hard to overdose on DXM because of how it affects respiratory depression due to its serotonin interaction. It makes it really effective for prevention of respiratory depression. That's why uh, they'll use it for people that um, are, are using certain opiates. You know, they... They want to come off of certain opiates, but um, they don't know any alternatives. The Exim has these minor new opioid-like properties, but it also uh, takes away from the withdrawal symptoms, from from how it works in its pharmacology, from antagonizing the NMDA glutamate receptor, which regulates the withdrawal symptoms opiates they definitely need to do, figure something out with the opiate withdrawal man because like when i came off of them I, I went on suboxone and that messed me up even more than the pills so i'd be very interested if they could figure something out with that like well they say mushrooms can get rid of it pretty quick like your addiction but Maybe I wouldn't use them right because I was going to try. I, I tried to use like psychedelics to quit smoking cigarettes, and maybe I really didn't want to quit, or maybe I wasn't using them. Maybe I really wasn't trying to quit, but I, I wasn't able to really get too much luck with it. You, you know, taking LSD used to be an extra step for the 12 step program for a spiritual awakening. No, I did not know that. That's that's actually amazing. They need to start that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be step 13. The, uh, the writer of the um, Alcoholics Anonymous book. That, um, program. He. 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 A spiritual awake. And into it, typically, people that use LSD um, have the highest.